Hey DIYers, Jarrett with the Alarm Grid here. Today we're going to discuss how you can add a 2 gig GB1 glass brick detector with a 2 gig GC3 system. Um, normally when you're going and programming the uh, glass brick detectors or any sensors in general, you want to make sure that you have the installer code available. Uh, the installer code is extremely important for these alarm systems, especially if you want to go ahead and add sensors or add any devices, because that allows you into the programming to get into the necessary menus to go ahead and set that up. Um, now, once you go ahead and set up a glass brick detector or even just the 2 gig GB1 in general, um, you want to make sure that you're testing it out to uh, ensure that this glass brick detector um, is picking up the uh, correct signals and it is actually working correctly. Um, now, if you want to go ahead and test that out, you can use um, a glass brick simulator, uh, which one of them is called the Honeywell FG107. Um, this is a, a glass brick simulator specifically built to work with the Honeywell sensors, but it can also work with uh, two gig sensors as well. Um, there are a couple of other compatible ones available too. If you want to go ahead and check those out, just check out our uh, webpage. There's a, there's a couple of them, and uh, but the one that we know that works uh, for sure is the Honeywell FG107. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and program um, the 2 gig GB1 glass brick detector um, into the 2 gig GC3, you're just going to follow these simple steps. So the first step is um, obviously you want to wake up your screen um, if it's black and uh, or if it's blank. And what you want to do is at the top right of the screen, you're going to hit the 2 gig logo. And this is going to immediately take you into the installer toolbox. Um, now, this is always going to ask you for the code. And this is where you want to type in the installer code. Uh, so the default installer code for this system is 1561. And then you're going to go into system configuration. You're going to go into wireless zones. And now it's going to take you to all the different zones uh, that you have set up or even not set up. Um, now just as, a, just as a side note for this, whenever you're looking at the, the zones, um, that are available. You, the ones that are available are going to be grayed out um, and they're going to be almost transparent. Um, any zones that are currently configured, they're going to show up as bold. So uh, for instance, front door, that is bold. So that means that we do have a center setup on there. Um, zone two, it is not bold, it's grayed out. So that means we don't have anything on that. So we're going to go ahead and use zone two. Um, so once you've gone to that zone, you're just going to press it, <clears throat> edit zone excuse me. And um, now it's going to take you to the programming menu. So this is where you want to uh, change all or configure all these settings to make sure that it does work with the glass brick detector, make sure everything is uh, set correctly. On the right side of the screen is where you would go ahead and input the different selections. So as you can see, um, it pulls up the different menus when you go through them. <clears throat> now the first one is center type. This is uh, basically setting up whether how you want this glass brick detector to uh, work, right? So, for instance, if you if this was a, a door contact, you would set the sensor type as entry exit zone or entry exit. Um, for glass brick detectors, you would normally set those up as a perimeter sensor um, because perimeter sensors, the way they're set up, is that if if that sensor is triggered, it's going to immediately trigger the alarm. Um, you don't normally want to have an entry exit zone or a, a setting on there because if someone were to break the glass, this is set up an entry exit it triggers an entry or ent uh, an entry delay and it doesn't trigger the alarm correctly until that specified time runs down. So for these, you want to set these up as perimeter, <coughs> excuse me, so that um, it triggers the alarm immediately. So for this, if you know the two digit, two digit, two digit number <laughs> uh, for the sensor type, then you can just type that in or you can hit the um, menu button on the top right <clears throat> and it'll bring the drop down for all the different options. So for this we're just going to tap perimeter um, and the center type number is 03 so if you knew that you just type in 03 or you could do what I just did. Um, once you've done that you can hit the down arrow it's going to take you to equipment code. Um, this is basically setting up the sensor to or setting the system to know what sensor this is. So if you know the equipment code you can either type it in or you can go ahead and press the menu button and scroll until you see uh, the glass brick detector. So <clears throat> there's two good glass brick detector right here, but I just want to scroll through and make sure that there's not one set specifically for the two gig GB1 in which I do not see that. So we're going to go ahead and set this to two gig glass brick detector. 
So now, uh, once we've chosen to get glass break detector, you're just going to hit the down arrow, and then it's going to take it to serial number. So this is where you want to um, enter the, the serial number for the uh, glass break detector to make sure the system um, is able to detect that this is the correct one. So basically, um, there's two ways of doing this. You can either manually input the uh, serial number um, within the box up here, or you can learn it in um, and just auto-enroll the the information. So for this instance, uh, we're just going to auto-enroll it. So if you want to do that, you just press learn and it puts the system to a listening mode. And all you have to do for the 2GB1 is just uh, take it off the backplate. And it picks up immediately. So as you can see, it pulls up a serial number right here. Um, whenever you are auto-enrolling sensors, you want to make sure that you're matching up the serial number to 100% confirm that uh, that is the correct sensor that you're trying to enroll. So this uh, shows 101.0217. If you look right here, it's very tiny, but <clears throat> if you look right here, it's, it's very small, but you can see the TXID, which is 101.0217. Um, so that is matching up with this. And once you've confirmed that, you just press accept. <clears throat> and if you want, uh, you could just close up the sensor again, make sure that's good. Once that's confirmed, you're just going to hit the down arrow again and take you to smart areas assignment. Um, this is where you would go ahead and set up the sensor to a specific partition. So if you had two partitions or three partitions, uh, let's say you want to set this up on partition three, you just tap S3. Um, or <clears throat> if you don't have any partitions, you just have it set up normally. You just go to partition one and just leave it the way it is. Once you're done with that, hit the down arrow, and then you have equipment age. So this is this is basically telling the system if this is a brand new, um, <clears throat> excuse me, glass brick detector, or if this is uh, an existing one that you've already used. So uh, for this, we're just going to keep it as new, um, and then you're going to hit the down arrow, and then we have sensor loop. So the loop number is very important for these, uh, for these sensors or sensors in general because if you have the incorrect loop set, then the sensor is not going to work correctly. So if you go ahead and fault that sensor, the panel is not going to pick it up immediately or it not pick it up in general sometimes. Um, so you want to make sure that that loop number is correct. For glass brick detectors and the GB1 in, in general, it would be loop one. So you can hit the down arrow and you go to tr transmission delay. Um, this is whether you want um, the signal for the sensor to, to transmit immediately or if you want there to be a delay period. So the uh, delay period would be about 30 seconds. So if the um, alarm were to be triggered, there's no transmission that's being sent out for 30 seconds. If you have it disabled, then it'll send out the, the signal immediately um, and then the central station will be able to know. But for this, we're just going to keep it enabled um, for the sake of the video. And then we're going to hit the down arrow one more time. You're going to go to voice descriptor. So this is where you want to set up a certain zone description for uh, the sensor. So like, let's say for instance, this is in your living room um, or maybe even uh, uh, in a bedroom, right? So if you want to go ahead and set that up, you just press edit voice descriptor and you're going to go ahead and type in the different words um, to be able to set this up. Now you can't just type in any word. Um, you would type in the word and the system will pick it up for you and you basically just add it in there. So let's say this is for <clears throat> the bedroom or a master bedroom. So we're going to type in master. And as you see, it picks it up automatically. So master bedroom. And we're just going to say glass break. Uh, so glass, it actually showed it a little uh, earlier, but we got glass break. I, right now we have four words describing this, but you can set up to six words if you wanted to. But uh, for this, we're just going to leave it as master bedroom glass break. So once you've done that, you press done, take you back to this screen, and then you can hit the down arrow, and then you have sensor reports. So this is where um, you would set that your you would enable this if you want the uh, signals or the um, sensor to send out signals over to the central station directly or if you want the alarm system to transmit this alarm signal to the central station or if you didn't want to. Um, if you disabled it then you wouldn't have any alarm signals sent out. If you had it enabled then it will, it will report to the central station. Um, then you're going to hit the down arrow and go to sensor supervised. Um, this is the supervision. 
for the sensor. So if you want to make sure that the sensor is being supervised, you have that enabled. If you don't care about it, uh, or if you don't want it, to, it enabled, then you just disable it. Then we're gonna go to sensor chime, uh, which is the last and final option for this for the sensors. Um, <clears throat> this is if you wanted this, uh, or if you wanted the system to chime or voice enunciate if the sensor were to be tripped. Um, so normally you would set the sensor chimes for like door contacts or sometimes maybe even motion detectors to let you know that these uh, certain areas are being accessed or the doors are being opened or anything like that. Glass brick detectors, normally you don't want to set up a sensor chime on it because these are meant for perimeter um, to trigger the alarm immediately. But if you want to go ahead and set that up, um, you just scroll here on the right and you can see the different options. So we have chime, chime two, chime my voice. <clears throat> if you wanted to set that up, you just choose it and that's it. So for this instance, um, we're just gonna leave it disabled or for this programming uh, video, we're just gonna leave it disabled, um, but you can set that up if you want to. Now, once you have everything programmed and you've confirmed everything is good, then uh, you could just exit what you're doing. So you can either press back the zones, which will take you back to obviously the zones that you're trying to do program. Um, you can hit the uh, skip button to go to the next sensor, start programming that sensor, or you can hit return to system configuration. So for this, we're just gonna tap on that. And then it takes us to this window. So to save any changes or discard or anything like that, it's gonna hit the back arrow and it's gonna bring up this window. So it's gonna show you everything that you've programmed. Um, if you've confirmed everything is good, then you can either press save, um, or you, if you've confirmed everything is good, you can press save. If you wanna go ahead and edit anything, you can press go back, and it'll take you back to the programming for the sensor, or you could just discard it and not save any changes. Uh, for this, we'll just press save, and it'll take you back to the main screen. It'll do a quick reboot, um, but basically, you now have the 2GIG GB1 programmed to the 2GIG GC3. And that is how you set up a 2GIG GB1 with the 2GIG uh, GC3 system. If you have any further questions about the 2GIG GC3 or alarm systems in general, please contact us at support alarmgrid.com or go to our website, alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you want notifications of future videos, please click the bell icon. This is Jared with Alarm Grid. You have yourself a great day.